Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jeffrey, here in Mumbai, shooting the Indian edition of World Makers. Mumbai is the gateway to India's business and advertising communities, and of course, Bollywood. To be world made, you need to know India. Today on World Makers, we'll meet the storytellers, entrepreneurs, and inventors, making India a global leader for innovation and imagination. Today, I'm happy to say we're here with Rupak Saluja, who's both the founder and CEO of Bang Bang Media Company. Rupak, welcome. Thank you. I mean, for the audience out there who's listening, talk a little bit about you know, how you made the leap from being on the agency side to becoming a media entrepreneur. What, you know, what was it that really motivated you to, to do that? Well, essentially, um, back in 2003, I was at Ogilvy. Um, I was on the account management side running the Motorola account for EMEA. And uh, I, I quit advertising and went to business school. I also had a venture in the music space. I was a DJ and I had a record label. And then I went to business school and moved to India in 2005 with the aim of setting up something in media and entertainment without a specific business plan. Um, and advertising just seemed to be the right way to go about it. And uh, by accident, I found myself back in advertising in one way or another. So commercials production was what uh, we, as at that time, Bang Bang Films did first. And we, we talk a lot about, you know, at JWT, we talk about being, in, you know, inspired by international interaction. We talk about being inspired by technological innovation. You have seemed to have captured that when I think about just the content that you're creating with your own company. I mean, how do you think about that now given, you know, because you've had a very international background. Mm -hmm. What's um, inspired you? So the international part was a very important part of what we did right from the beginning, and it still is. Um, Bang Bang Films, which was the original company uh, where we did commercials, was and is still positioned as India's international production company. In fact, it's a part of our tagline. Um, when we started the company, there were a couple of things that were going on over here, one of which was that in a very heavily cross-pollinated region, which is Asia Pacific, um, you know, India was very insulated in the commercials production business. And what I mean by that is suppose you have a JWT Singapore putting a job out to bid. They'd talk to companies in Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, Thailand. No one was talking to companies in India. And the converse was true as well, which is that Indian agencies were hardly talking to directors and producers from outside of this country. And so we wanted to change that, and we brought in international talent, international directorial talent, and um, that kind of, in a way, did revolutionize, uh, revolutionize the business and the sector. So today, the Indian market is way more open than it ever was. And I think what's interesting is you talk about commercial production, and you know, I think that now more than ever, even in the US, people are always talking about, well, should we shoot in, in, in India? And there's much more international interaction among directors. And how do you see that in relationship to social? Because clearly you've established a lot of uh, credentials in the commercial production space. But, but you know, when I think about Caravari D, I would think everybody would want to talk to you about social because to achieve something like 61 million plus views on YouTube is, is amazing. Um, and definitely a national success, and to some degree an international success as well. I mean, if you look at it, Colaveri, the track was released on YouTube uh, on November the 17th, 2011. And on December the 30th, CNN declared it the most downloaded and viewed track in the world in 2011. What we really did with that was, uh, it's, you know, it was local in the sense that it was from a, it's from an Indian region, from an Indian state of Tamil Nadu, and it's in a local language. Uh, we, we made it relevant through social media by using specific hashtags that caught people's interest on Twitter, and it pretty much compounded from being a regional phenomenon to a national phenomenon. And then when we realized that this was a beast that was completely growing out of control, we said, why not make it sort of go global? But we didn't realize it was going to go that big, honestly. I think there's some learning in that. I mean, one takeaway I received out of that story, I think if that went through the lens of traditional advertising, it never would have been approved because somebody would have said, oh, it's a local language. Nobody's going to get it. When in fact, maybe that was even part of the appeal because people were fascinated by something they didn't completely understand. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you look at what's happening with uh, Psy and Gangnam Style right now, right. I mean, is he taking himself seriously? Is it something that's understood in Korea? It, it, it's a mystery to everyone. You know, how real is it? Exactly. And so that's what the fascinating part about the whole thing is, actually. Uh, a lot of the people that will be listening to World Makers here with you 
are people outside of India. And right. of course, a lot of those people are fascinated with the growth opportunities in India. Now, because of your background, you have that international perspective. I mean, what advice would you give marketers who really want to grow their business in India, especially as it relates to fashion and beauty and what you're doing? I think it's a, it's a real combination of international and local. So yes, people are, especially you know, in an aspirational space like beauty and fashion and luxury, people are inspired by and um, aspire to kind of be part of a global community of using premium brands. But at the same time, it's got to be right for India. There's, there's some very particular things about this market. And sometimes, you know, one feels a bit presumptuous thinking, oh, yeah, India is different. And, you know, I remember going back to the days uh, when I used to run a regional account and literally getting irritated with local markets that actually thought that they were different. But it's true. Now, everything's different. It seems to me that everything's different. And India is, you know, if, if you don't actually tap into that local Indian insight, even as a global brand, you're not going to succeed here. So just looking at India from a more uh, macro perspective, I mean, given your background and experience, I mean, what would be the one or two pieces of advice you would give a global brand who wants to become more competitive and innovative in, in, in the Indian market? How do you actually be flexible enough without losing what your brand is about? And it, it varies from sector to sector, but I think each category actually has to look at it in a different way to, to contextualize it to the Indian market. And that's really important. Mm. Again, I say this with the caveat that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people say this. If you talk to a Brazilian um, person in, in this industry, they'd probably say the same thing about Brazil. But I can't emphasize that enough for India. Rupak, it's been great talking to you, and thank you for joining us on the latest installment of World Makers here in Mumbai. Thank you, Bob.